incoming administration to continue to respect workers' rights, imbued with social economic development and driven by the four pillars of decent work agenda. Thank you for your sacrifice and patriotism to the Nigerian project. Nigerian workers get the nod as International Workers' Day is marked. Better days ahead as social and economic justice for Nigerian workers is priority, says incoming administration. Plus, update on evacuation of Nigerians stranded in Sudan. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on NTA Network News on this Workers' Day. I'm Cyril Stober in Abuja. Michael Olale joins us from Lagos. Now, being the last Workers' Day marked under his administration, President Muhammad Buhari is urging the coming government to uphold the concept of decent work and adoption of social dialogue for national cohesion and improved production output by workers. The president made the remark at the 2023 Workers' Day celebration in Abuja. Joseph Otsen reports. They are seen along streets and heaps of refuse collecting waste materials. Many will find it difficult to identify them as workers. But they are out here to make a statement that they are also contributing to social economic development of the country and should be treated right. We used to gather even more than a trailer of this empty rover and we are, we are, and we are taking it to Lagos to recycle it, to recycle it. Don't... It is for workers like this and many others going through difficult times to cope with life that the organized labor tagged the 2023 Workers' Day, Workers' Right and Social Economic Justice. The drive is to move beyond demands for wages, to access to quality education, health, security and inclusivity. If they want increased productivity, which is the basis for national development, then they must be prepared to treat us better. They must be prepared to treat us first as humans, then as major contributors to the world creation. President Muhammadu Buhari, represented by Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, identifies with the yearning of the workers, explaining why his administration took several steps to improve wages and implementation of social interventions. I encourage the incoming administration to continue to respect workers' rights imbued with social economic development and driven by the four pillars of decent work agenda to promote jobs and enterprise, guaranteeing rights at work, extending social protection and promoting social dialogue for consensus building and maintenance of industrial relationships. We have, as a government, also provided better working conditions and environment and the lens when we can. We have also invested in training and training, education, and human capacity development for Nigerian workers, especially those in the public sector. Let us have a peaceful country. We have no other country except this one. And we must do this, and we must do this for our children. The 2023 Workers' Day comes with a drive for deeper protection in workplaces that will ensure greater socio-economic justice and perhaps giving a sense of belonging to all, including these scrap and waste workers. In Abuja, Joseph Otsen, NTA News. And the president-elect Bola Tinubu has extended his hands of friendship to Nigerian workers through the two central labor unions, Nigeria Labor Congress and Trade Union Congress, as Nigeria celebrates Workers' Day. President-elect Tinubu acknowledged today as a special day in most parts of the world to salute and honor the working people whose hard work and sweat continue to oil the wheel of human progress and advancement. In a statement he issued personally, Tinubu promised that when sworn in as president of the country, the workers would find him a dependable ally and co-laborer in the fight for social and economic justice for all Nigerians, including all the working people. 
The president-elect said his plans for better welfare and working conditions, which are clearly spelt out in his renewed hope agenda for a better Nigeria, is a covenant born of conviction and one he is prepared to keep. Bolatino will promise that when he has the honor and privilege to lead from May 29, workers will not only have a minimum wage, but what he calls a living wage to have a decent life and provide for their families. He said every May 1st in Nigeria is not just a public holiday to commemorate the contributions and sacrifices of workers to the well-being of our country, but also a celebration of the rights of workers to dignity, decent wages and decent living, and more importantly, it is a testament to the critical role the labor movement plays in our march towards a stronger, united, and more prosperous nation. In the meantime, President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, has congratulated all workers in Nigeria as they join their counterparts around the world to mark Workers' Day. Senator Lawan, in his statement, noted that the great Nigerian workers have been remarkable for their patriotism, commitment to nation building, and resilience in the face of serious development challenges. He observed that the Ninth National Assembly has guarded itself against any anti labor legislation since inception in 2019, highlighting major bills passed by the Ninth National Assembly, which include Deep Offshore and Inland Basin Production Sharing Contracts Amendment Act 2019, among others. And the head of the civil service of the Federation, Fola Shadi Esson, has fe felicitated with the Nigerian worker on the occasion of International Workers' Day. In a statement she personally issued, she commended the sacrifice, patriotism, and industry of the Nigerian worker, especially civil servants in the country, and tasked them to collectively rededicate themselves towards building a greater and more prosperous nation. As Nigeria's most valued asset, she said, government remains committed to their welfare and development. Now, earlier speaking on Workers' Day, the National President, Non-Academic Staff Union of Educational and Associated Institutions, Makulo Hassan, gave an insight into this year's theme of workers' rights and economic justice. Here are excerpts. Uh, we looked at it at the committee level that the appropriate uh, theme for this year is workers' right and social economic justice. What are we talking of here? We are talking of how to better the life of the downtrodden, the downtrodden which uh, is the worker, which are the workers. And uh, just like the minister said, uh, I'm happy if it is not going to be theoretical. Uh, we have come a long way that what we call minimum wage today is nothing to write home about. Uh, the minimum wage now, if you interpret it in terms of dollars, it is less than $50,000, uh, $50, uh, Per month. Uh, we should not take any uh, workers home. We are talking about a uh, social economic right. This worker, average worker, with uh, maybe a family of three, and you are giving, let's say, maybe it is increased even up to 60,000. You are going to use 35,000 to buy one bag of rice. Then how do you feed your children for the entire month? You are not talking about paying other bills. Hmm. You are not talking about taking them to hospital. You are not talking about paying school fees. So at the end of the day, then the name that they have, they have given us, that is the civil servant, you remain a servant. And in that situation, you can't build a home that you retire to with your children when you retire. The social dialogue is not new. Collective bargaining is not new in the country. And the aspect of remerging is not this issue of coming together to agree on the particular issues. Do we implement? As we talk now in the labor cycle, there are agreements that were signed since last year and nothing has been said about it. So if uh, the government uh, will meet with workers and you agree on a particular issue and you go into action and implement, there will be no upheaval between the government and the workers. And on its part, the Nigerian Bar Association salutes the resilience and steadfastness of Nigerian workers particularly members of the legal profession who, despite national challenges, continue to keep the wheels of the nation turning. In a statement, the Nigerian Bar Association also commends the self-employed sole proprietors and entrepreneurs 
whose ingenuity and resourcefulness create employment opportunities for the masses. The NBA appeals to the incoming administration at federal and state government levels to initiate and focus on policies that promote inclusiveness and uh, prioritize infrastructural development. And still on May Day, we'll bring you activities of the May Day celebration across the nation, compiled by Zenret Dingmung. All right, we'll probably bring you that much later in the news. Well, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has saluted Nigerian workers as they celebrate this year's Workers' Day with their counterparts across the world. The party's National Publicity Secretary, Debo Lugmagba, in a statement, commended Nigerian workers for their resilience, loyalty, and patriotism in serving their fatherland. The party charged Nigerian workers to use their strength and pivotal position in the country to protect and defend the nation's constitutional democracy at all times. I will take a break here. There'll be more after this time out. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. And now it's uh, back to our earlier report on how May Day was marked across uh, the nation. And this is compiled by Zenrit Dingmung. In Kano State, Abdullahi Mustafa covered the event at the Sania Bata Stadium, where Governor Ganduji announced a parting gift for school teachers. I'm pleased to announce that government has granted waiver for payment to the subscribers of the Imbogo Teachers Reserve Area Housing Scheme. Similarly, Governor of Anambra State Professor Chukuma Soludo wants an effective and efficient workforce, just as he promises workers enhanced welfare, as reported by Ndem Kalu. All oh, at this union workers is. We must get back to working five days, Monday to Friday. And it is the union of all of us who make our number state prosperous, who make our number state livable. One will endeavor for success and be that we can welcome to look into the agreement of April 24th, 2020, between the state government and organized level, to have the full implementation of the union of wage. In a city state, Ayode Jogun Shaki reports that the 2023 Workers' Day ceremony was attended by the state governor, Biodun Oyabanji, and top government functionaries. Tranquility being experienced in the state since the inception of the administration and the largely attributed to the collaborative disposition and for development approach. Meanwhile, Bono state government has assured to fulfill all the demands made by the labor movement for overall development of the workforce, improved productivity and service delivery in the state, as reported by Kaigama Mustafa. Claire Marjorie in Port Harcourt reports that hopes are high among workers in River State of enhanced welfare from the incoming governor. We have approved the promotion of over 4,000 eligible civil servants to their appropriate grade levels and we have directed the commission to issue the beneficiaries with their promotion letters. This is important to us and we are very hopeful that the, the government will do the need for... Francis Udojo in Kogi State reports that workers are pleading for an enabling working environment and prioritization of workers' welfare to enhance rapid socioeconomic development of the nation. I therefore urge you to keep upholding the values of hard work, dedication and honesty in the discharge of your duties. In Abuja, Zen Redding Moon. NT News. And now to other news, the chairperson Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Abika Dabri Arewa, says Egypt has opened its borders for Nigerians. The chairperson says the development was as a result of intervention of President Mohamed Buhari and President of Egypt Abdel Fattah el Sisi. She, however, states that a stringent condition was attached to the border opening 
a condition that was not disclosed to the public. To this end, the process of moving Nigerians from Sudan's border to Aswan for airlift is in progress. In another development, the federal government has evacuated more than 1,000 Nigerians from Khartoum and they are on their way to the port of Sudan. Some of the students on transit told NTA that they were moving in a convoy of 27 buses, with each bus carrying 50 to 55 Nigerians, stating that no one was left behind. The government is looking at the possibility of using Port Sudan to ship Nigerians to Jeddah in Saudi Arabia and fly them home. Well, we're hoping that we'll be joined by Nigeria's ambassador to Egypt, Ambassador Noura Abba Musa Rimi, uh, during the course of this uh, newscast. And uh, we'll be seeking to find out just how the process is going. And when he joins us, we'll bring you that interview. The immediate past Minister of Niger Delta Affairs and former Governor of Akwaibom State, Godswila Pabu, has formally informed President Muhammad Buhari of his aspiration to become the President of the 10th Senate. This was at an audience with the Nigerian leader of the presidential veda on Sunday evening. State House correspondent Adam Sambu has the details. Senator Gozila Pabio, who served as minority leader of the 8th Senate before his appointment as minister, has just been re-elected into the National Assembly. He is here to show President Muhammad Buhari his certificate of return and formally appreciate him for his selfless service of the country, worthy legacies for posterity, and ensuring that the governing APC remains united and formidable. I thank him for the opportunity to serve Nigeria in that capacity and also to let him know that we we'll continue to pray for him so that God will continue to sustain him as we move forward and as the transition from him to the incoming president. Abola Ahmed Chinubu, that God will continue to give Nigeria peace and through them that progress will remain our portion in the country. During the visit, Senator Akpabio sought President Muhammad Buhari's blessings for his aspiration to become the president of the 10th Senate. And he was happy to hear that. So what is Senator Akpabio bringing on board? Akpabio is uh, known uh, as an uncommon transformer. Akpabio is uh, known as a man who is result oriented. I uh, recall that when I was a governor, I brought so many innovations to bear, infrastructurally, educationally, socially, and otherwise, and also in terms of human empowerment. So I intend to bring a lot of reforms into the Senate in the ways and manner we do business to assist the next administration to succeed. Uh, we will be very thorough in doing everything. We will bring about loyalty to the Constitution we we'll bring about loyalty uh, to Nigerians. We will tackle issues through legislation. We have done a lot of consultations, and they've, they've been very positive and well received. In fact, it's almost like a, a, like a woman who was already eight months pregnant, just a month to deliver. The 10th National Assembly will be inaugurated early next month under the incoming Bola Tinubu administration. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. In the meantime, South-South Youth and Stakeholders Forum has appealed to Senators-elect of the 10th National Assembly to elect Senator Godswill Akpabiu as Senate President. President of the group, Legborsi Yamabana, while highlighting the achievements and leadership qualities of Senator Akpabiu, notes that an Akpabiu-led National Assembly will promote amicable working relationship between the executive and the legislature. We call on other geopolitical zones to cooperate with the South-South region in choosing who becomes the next president of the Senate. And for us, the square man we see for that square job is no other than Senator Goswil Akpabio, C-O-N. His sterling qualities and uncommon performance as a governor, Senate Minority Leader of the Eighth Senate, Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, remain unparalleled. We wish to assure Mr. President-elect that the use of Niger Delta will continue to play her roles of ensuring conducive environments 
for economic activities to thrive. Bauchi State APC governorship candidate in the 2023 general election, Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar, has expressed confidence in the judiciary to do justice in petitions filed in challenging the outcome of the governorship election in the state. Sadiq Abubakar was speaking when a large number of his supporters trooped to the Tafawa Balewa International Airport to welcome him back from the Lesser Hajj. Bature Bala reports. That was Bauchi State APC governorship candidate Sadiq Baba Abubakar shaking hands with some of his supporters on his arrival at Abubakar Tafawa Balewa International Airport Bauchi. The APC governorship candidate who said the result of the recent governorship election in Bauchi State is not a true reflection of what the electorate voted for, expressed his confidence in the judiciary toward doing justice to the party. I believe that the judicial system of Nigeria is a system that is reliable, and I'm sure at the end of the day, we'll be able to get our mandate back. Once that mandate is back, what we promise the people is what we have he commended APC members in Bauchi State for being law-abiding and charged them to continue supporting the party in its effort to reclaim its mandate in the state. He congratulated Muslims in the state for successful completion of Ramadan past and peaceful Eid al-Fitr celebration. In Bauchi, Batura Balamalam Pashi, NTA News. There's more news ahead as we link up with Michael Olale in Lagos. Michael? Thank you, Cyril. The organized labor movement has maintained that there is need for the federal government to consult representatives of Nigerian workers when the need arises for them to fix appropriate remuneration to cushion the effect of fuel subsidy removal on public sector workers. The Workers' Union stated this at the 2023 Workers' Day celebration in Lagos. Musa Tolia reports. Workers' Day celebration provides a platform for workers in glowing colorful shirts to present peculiar expectations of the government. However, some of the expectations expressed by the workers, especially in the area of enhanced welfare packages, have been captured in the keynote address presented by the Deputy Governor, Abafemi Hamzat, who represented the Governor at the event. Given our commitment and disposition to meeting workers' and labor's requests in matters of welfare and security, we are all full that we shall keep working together to give way to our aspiration of a rising Lagos. Workers have been treated as... The organized labor movement wants to be part of a broader consultation when discussion on subsidy removal comes up. If at the end of the day, the government wants the workers to support the removal of the subsidy, we have to sit down and discuss on how the uh, subsidy removal effect will be cushioned by government. So, but we continue to look at the level of review that has been done vis-a-vis -vis the inflation that we have and the standard of living that we expect for our, for our members. Colorful processions by various trade unions in attendance marked the end of this year's Workers' Day celebration with a theme, Workers' Rights and Social Economic Justice. In Lagos, Musa Toliat, NTA News. Reformation of Nigerian Correctional Service through public-private partnership has started yielding results with the inauguration of an ICT hub at the Kirikiri Medium Correct Custodian Center, rather, at Papa Lagos, giving hope of a brighter future to image. Joe Popola reports that a new zona headquarters for Zone A of the Nigerian Correctional Service was also inaugurated. Empowerment of inmates through education remains a cardinal objective of the reformation of Nigerian correctional system. Round of applause. The inauguration of this ICT hub at the Kirikiri Medium Custodial Center by the representative of the Minister of Interior, Rauf Arekbeshola, is expected to create opportunity for the inmates to acquire skills for self-reliance. The ICT hub equipped with state-of-the-art facilities and 5G internet enabled is a public-private partnership which should be replicated in other custodial centers. It's worthy to mention that the National Open University is also in collaboration in this. So that you are behind bars does not mean that you cannot better yourself in educational field. People here can acquire uh, 
bachelor's, master's degrees, and other qualifications. Another major milestone in the rebrand project is this ultra modern headquarters situated in Ekoi, expected to boost the morale of officers. The Controller General of Nigerian Correctional Service, Aliru Nababa, expressed appreciation to the federal government for the improved funding of the service, which has translated into remarkable improvements in infrastructure and welfare of inmates and personnel. This trajectory is a clear manifestation of the golden footprints of the federal government under President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, in the Nigerian Correctional Service. The expectation of stakeholders is that the positive trajectory will be sustained for the benefit of Nigerians. In Lagos, Joel Bukwola, NC News. Do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen for updates. Time for some messages. The news will be back shortly. Please stay. The Minister of Water Resources, Suleiman Adamu, says plans are underway to convert the only water research institute in the country to a degree awarding institution. The minister stated this when he inaugurated projects at the Water Research Institute, Kaduna. Achari Maxwell reports. It's meant to be a public holiday for workers, but the Minister of Water Resources is busy on the field inaugurating projects at the Water Resources Institute in Kaduna. Projects inaugurated includes hostel accommodation facilities, research centers and lecture theater to improve capacity and research development in the water sector. The minister's interest also inspected some locally made facilities fabricated by the institute where he expressed satisfaction on the plan by the federal government to upgrade the institute to a university. It involves quite a number of institutions, uh, federal ministry of education, national universities commission, uh, maybe getting the presidency also, and then there has to be a bill and it has to go to the ministry of justice and then before it goes to the National Assembly, we need to interact also with the National Assembly. It's a long process, but the process has started uh, more than a year ago. But uh, I hope we can push it as far as we can go to a point of no return. Done whatever required. So the facilities are done. We've gone to the NUC, we've talked with them, and uh, I think. It is moving on fine. No. Suleiman Adamu reiterates his commitment to create an enabling environment to make the institute realize its full potentials in capacity development on contemporary issues to address emerging challenges in the water sector. Achari Maxwell, NTA News. The establishment of a Nigerian Navy Girls Secondary School in Honor local government area of Akwaibom State will provide job opportunities not only for the people of the state but for the nation as well. Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Awal Gambu, stated this during the handing over of a model secondary school to Uwa Ubium to the Nigerian Navy for the establishment of a Navy Girls Secondary School in the state. Kelvin Samuel reports. Presented by the Commissioner for Education at Kwaibom State, the Governor Y handing over the document and keys of the former model secondary school to Ubium, a Wauna local government area, to the Chief of Nava Staff for the establishment of Navy Girls Secondary School, says it is part of government's effort to bring quality education closer to the reach of the people in rural communities, while assuring regular support for the actualization of the project. It is no exaggeration to aver that a nation's socioeconomic development rests squarely on the quality of education given to their children. Chief of Nava staff represented by the Commander NNS Jubilee Commodore Ulumide Fazaz assures that the coming of Navy School to the area will not only help in enhancing education but also be of immense economic benefit to the people. I'm particularly optimistic that these schools will produce future leaders to the benefit of Okawa State and the nation at large. On behalf of the show of Nava staff, I want to most sincerely appreciate His Excellency. The native government of Akrabo State, Mr. Gabriel de Kutum Manel, and the entire people of Akrabo State for their unflinching support and cooperation with the Nigerian Navy. When established, Akwaibom State will be playing host to the first ever Navy Girls Secondary School in the country. In Uyo, K. 
Kevin Samuel, NTA News. Since its establishment more than 50 years ago, the Nigerian Air Force Officers Wives Association has been in the forefront of empowering its members, made up of wives and dependents of Air Force personnel with requisite skills for their self-employment. This time around, however, members of NAFOA are supporting their spouses as the Nigerian Air Force commemorates 59 years of its establishment with a road walk around the city of Abuja as a form of public sensitization. Nafua has chosen today to ensure that our members and guests partake in this health work and educate ourselves in line with the team, the heart and lifestyle modification. We all know that the heart is the pump that provides oxygen and nutrients to all the tissues in our body. Therefore, keeping it in great shape is very vital to health life. We must always work together. We must always see ourselves. It is not possible for you to live with a group of people and you never have issues, misunderstanding, etc. But the most important thing is to forgive. Let's learn to always forgive one another. Do not bear grudge. That way you will have a healthy heart. Nigerian Air Force has mapped out a series of activities to mark this year's celebration. Now, the Nigeria Police Force National Cybercrime Center has arrested a 21-year-old male, an indigenous of Abuwa local government area in River State, for creating a fraudulent platform, AMC Stock Experts, to defraud unsuspecting members of the global cyber community. In a statement, Force Public Relations Officer Ulumuywa Dejobi said the arrest of the suspect followed reports from the Hungarian police in 2022. While efforts have been intensified to apprehend other members of the syndicate, the Inspector General of Police urged the entire cyber community and Internet users to be mindful of unverified investment platforms and schemes. Time to take on some business and let's go over to Benny Adams. Thank you and welcome to business. The advocacy for consumption of Made in Nigeria products with the mantra consume what you produce and produce what you consume has given birth to the campaign for consumption of organic food for better health and value for money. Then in its unique and best of it and we have them in varieties which the world is still struggling to believe is it possible why Nigeria no foreign goods will come from those distances without preservatives. And um, preservatives comes with chemical. Chemical comes with harmful, harmfulness in, in, our, our, in our own health. So if we can understand that most of us, we have small farms behind our, 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 our houses, and you probably know who is even behind what you are consuming. You can get it as fresh as anything. Nobody can claim to you that he has a farm for barber trees. They grow wild. So with that, that means they are naturally organic. They grow in their own natural habitat without interference. So where can you get the best apart from that? That's a wild collect a collection. And what it means that you have to charge for a premium for that. And all, likewise, the, the shea butter. The shea butter too, is, it grows wild. People go to pick it, not to, to farm it. And we still do the processing, get the oil out of it, get, to, look, and whole lot of products from it. We're going to generate jobs, we're going to generate more revenue. And the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation says it is in receipt of inquiries over alleged salary pardon on the Integrated Personnel and Payroll Information System, IPIS, involving someone specified 
ministries, departments, and agencies. Director of Press, Office of the Accountant General of the Federation, Baha Mokwa confirmed there is no evidence of salary padding before the Office of the Accountant General at this time. However, the office says it is aware of reported breach of the IPPIS third party payment protocol at an institute outside Abuja. The incident is being investigated by relevant anti corruption security and regulatory agencies. In the meantime, the staff is suspected to be connected with the breach has been suspended to allow for thorough investigation. And the Central Bank of Nigeria says there is no plan to phase out the newly redesigned 200. 501,000 notes from circulation. The clarification follows what the Apex Bank described as a fake news item circulating in the media. In a statement issued by the acting director of corporate communications, Dr. Isa Abdul Mumin, the CBN assured the public that the new and old currency notes have been in circulation side by side, adding that the bank has been receiving a good quantity of redesigned banknotes from the Nigerian Security and Minting Company Limited. The Apex Bank also reiterated commitment to supplying the approved indent for the smooth running of the economy and urged the general public to disregard any report suggesting a phase-out of the redesigned currency and continue to transact with both old and new notes as legal tender. Well, that is Business News. Network News continues with Serial. Thank you, Benny. The Majority Leader of the House of Representatives, Al-Hassan Addo Dogua, says amendments to tax laws by the National Assembly are meant to entrench effective taxation system for Nigeria's economic development. During an engagement with the management of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, CITN, in relation to the amendment of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICANN Act, the House leader stressed that the legislature is aware of the need to ensure that an enabling environment is created for implementation. Such implementation, he added, should be administratively practicable. We must make bills that can be practicable, bills that can be administered. If you make bills that are difficult to be practiced or make bills or laws that at the end uh, relevant stakeholders find that bill inconvenient to work with, then it's like you have made no law at all. CITN wants the National Assembly to make changes to provisions of Section 15 and some other grey areas in the proposed amendment to the ICANN Act, which it says is not in the interest of the country. You know, where the person who does accounting, who does auditing, is equally trying to compute the tax. And the implication of that means that you cannot be a judge in your own case. So the ICANN Amendment Bill forwarded from the Senate for concurrence is slated for second reading in the House of Representatives. There are growing concerns over the spate of building collapse in Nigeria, prompting the call for stringent enforcement of building codes and the prosecution of those found to be responsible for the collapse of buildings. Adibola Brooksley Sunday reports. Records show that between 1974 and 2022, over 541 buildings have collapsed in Nigeria, with over 1,100 deaths recorded and many injured. It's not that the engineers, the contractors don't know, but it's just all about a selfish interest and in which they are conscious, they know that they are not doing the right thing. Poor structural design, poor compliance with specifications, poor quality control, faulty construction methodology, foundation failure and corruption are some factors that contribute to building collapse. Given the frequency and devastating consequences of building collapse nationwide, I visited the engineering house and met the number one engineer in Nigeria, Tassiu Sahad Gidari Woodil. Some of these things are beyond uh, some statutory bodies are beyond the professionals. When I say the professionals, I don't mean only engineers. In the construction industry, we have so many professionals. The standards are there, but at the same time, government has its own share. Government at all levels. 
and I must say this, at the federal level, which is the particular government agency that has been empowered to move into any construction site and inspect and check the quality of the material. Even with the tragedies that are involved, analysts say it is rare to see a corporate punish for infractions either the promoters of the owners of the collapsed building or the government officials who incompetence contributed to the collapse. We have disciplinary committee here. We have disciplinary panel in Kore. So both sides we will try if one of our members is found wanting in such things, we will try him here as our member. Lack of comprehensive subsoil investigation before designs are done is another factor identified by experts. The town planner will also tell you that we have designated this area to carry only two floors. We have designated this area to carry skyscrapers. We have designated this area is only bungalows that we construct. This is the job of the town planner. Sincerely speaking, 95 to 98% engineers are not involved. The question now is, how and when will the spate of building collapse in the country, which has regrettably claimed many lives and property, end? Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. The Nigerian Export Promotion Council, NEPC, is set to establish a cashew processing plant in Ogbomosho, Oyo State, for value chain development of the cash crop. Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Dari, who accompanied NEPC's Executive Director, Ezra Yakusak, on an inspection tour of some cashew farms in Ogbomosho, says the move will serve as a major boost for wealth creation and employment for youths in the area. Comfort Amodo reports from Ogbomosho. Nigeria is considered one of the leading producers of raw cashew nuts in the world, with an annual production capacity of nearly 800,000 metric tons. Ogbomosho is a cashew hub in Oyo State. Some of the best quality of the cash crop in Africa are produced here. However, lack of processing machinery is a challenge for more than 2,000 cashew farmers here. Although cashew tops the charts of non-all exportable products in international markets, value addition is lacking in Nigeria. The Nigerian Export Promotion Council, NEPC, is about to change the narrative with the establishment of modern processing plants. We are here in Obomosho uh, to see the farmers, interact with them, and to arrange a PPP arrangement, a public-private partnership arrangement, to set up a cashew processing uh, plant here in Obomosho along with the farmers. It's not going to be 100% government. They'll be part of it, they'll contribute to it, and they will run it. The objective is to increase... Minister of Youths and Sports Development, Sunday Dari, an illustrious son of Obomosho, considers cashew processing plants for Obomosho a new economic frontier. I believe that uh, there's a value chain in cashew production that will employ not just uh, the adults, but also the youth. With this, off-takers will come. Their cashew will not go bad because easily you have off-takers that will take it off them, pay them, process it. Market will expand, both local and internationally. The council has also commenced an organic cashew certification program for farmers, Comfort Amodu, NTA News. More reports ahead after these messages. Stay with us. Sports now. Team Nigeria have swept three of the available gold medals in the 100 meters events on day two of the African Under-18-20 Championship in Zambia. Uh, here are some other sports news from our sports desk. Nigeria scored in Iglet with face Morocco on Wednesday me in Group B encounter in the ongoing Under-17 African Cup of Nations Championship in Algeria. The Indokobadi led team will have to improve on their one-day victory over Zambia to beat Morocco, who also triumphed over South Africa 2-0. I think if they put their heads down and they are cool about the game, at, apart from Adam Hassin, another brilliant striker for Morocco, I think Nigeria has what it takes to win that game. 
Morocco under-17 national team currently top Group B with three points, followed by Nigeria. Ahead of the 2024 Olympics in Paris, France, 22 Nigerian shooters, including 11 male and 11 females, have begun camping in Abuja to sharpen their skills for medals prospects. Two events have been outlined for the shooters by the Nigerian Shooting Sports Federation to secure minimum qualification score in the race for the Games. The athletes will compete in pistol, air, rifle, and shotgun. In judo, Ukrainian athletes will boycott the next month's World Judo Championships in Qatar over concerns about Russia and Belarusian participation. The International Judo Federation decided to allow the athletes from Russia and Belarus to compete as neutrals. The decision will allow judokas from these countries to participate in the qualifying series for the 2024 Olympic Games. With Sports Update, I'm Austin Ejemodu, NTA News. Weather now, let's get to see the forecast for tomorrow's weather. Hello and you're welcome to the weather forecast. In the morning hours, we have prospects of thunderstorms over parts of southern Cross River rivers and Aquaibom to the north over parts of Taraba and the southern parts of Adamawa. As the day progresses, we have better prospects of thunderstorms, which, which should extend to southern parts of Brno through Gombe, extending to parts of Bauchi, southern Kaduna, and the high ground areas of Plateau, northern Nasara, and parts of the Federal Capital Territory. This thunderstorm should extend to parts of Benue State, Kogi, and the inland areas of the south, extending to the coastal parts of the country. The north should be more of cloudy, extending to parts of Kwara and Niger, where not much is expected rain for a while. And that's it from here. Thank you for watching. And the weather forecast concludes tonight's network news. Well, thank you for watching. I'm Cyril Stover. Good night. <laughs>